Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see you once again on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, this um, this show is being pre-taped, so I certainly appreciate the comments being made, but I won't be reacting to them because it's already been taped. <laughs> but I'm excited about the Word of God. I'm excited about the Word of God that I'm about to give unto you. Uh, God bless me with this word and I want to bless you with it. Uh, I certainly thank God for each and every one of you who support us, who like us, who post your comments, uh, who share our Facebook page with others. You are just awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're praying for your strength. Continue to pray for us in the name of Jesus continue uh, to keep us in your prayers. Those of you who want to support us financially can do so through GiveLify or PayPal. And we appreciate everything that you do to help move the kingdom forward. I know it will be a blessing to you, to you, to you. Let us begin with prayer as we always do. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. We love you, God. You've been so good to us, and you continue to be good to us at the Lion's Cross, to your people everywhere. Continue to bless them, protect them in this age of COVID. God, send health, strength in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, I sent a text to my bishop. Even pastors have pastors. Amen. So I went to my pastor, my bishop, Bishop Rick August, and I I asked the question, how do you forgive when you can't forget? I thought it was an interesting question. And his answer was very plain, very simple. You don't have to forget, uh, but you do have to lay aside any ill will, any hatred that has to be laid aside. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And let's get to the scripture. So really, really, when you start talking about this subject matter, how to forgive when you can't forget, it really is the absence of something. Your success is based on what's not there, what's not in your heart. The absence of malice. <laughs> the absence of malice. Kind of a legal phrase used in, in, in when people slander <laughs> someone. <laughs> but um, but it really is the absence of, the lack of, the lack of hatred, uh, the lack of ill will, the lack of um, anger. Um, that's where you want to get to. You want to get to that point. And I'll talk about why that's so important. So what are we trying to avoid? In the book of James, the first chapter, the 20th verse, the Bible says, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You see how important it is for us as people of God not to have hatred in our heart because when we are operating in our flesh, when we are operating from a standpoint of revenge, because we are operating outside of what God has for us. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. We should not try to take the place of God. We should not try to then put ourselves in God's stead. Let God be God and let us follow him. Let us follow him. We're trying to avoid. What are we trying to avoid? In this, when we're talking about this, this issue, in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 19 through 21, the Bible says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, 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 <laughs> variance, emulations, wrath, <laughs> the wrath of man, where not the righteousness of God, Strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told, also told you in time past, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, if we don't forgive because we, we harbor uh, wrath and hatred in our heart towards someone who has truly hurt us, we don't forgive them. The Bible says our Heavenly Father will not forgive us. That's important. <clears throat> but the other issue is when we harbor hatred and wrath in our heart, and that word hatred means hostility, it means enmity. When we have wrath in our heart, which is kind of a passion, as if, have you ever seen somebody get so worked up when they're angry? They're, <laughs> they're breathing hard. <laughs> you kind of see that sometimes before people are about to go to start fighting. Amen. I've seen it. They're kind of huffing and puffing, ready to fight. Fierceness, indignation. When you have that, when you have that in your heart, that's part of the works of the flesh. And they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Operating in our flesh defeats our purpose of trying to get to heaven. <laughs> it's just that simple. It's just that simple. Here's something else I thought about. When you're angry, I mean overly angry, we're talking about operating in the spirit of hatred and wrath. It leads you into other sins. Murder. Mm -hmm. Or you uh, hate your spouse so much, leads you into other sins. Adultery. You hate yourself. You hate yourself. Lead you into other sins, drunkenness, where you're destroying yourself. My God from glory. The fact of the matter is, the more we operate in the flesh, the more we operate in sin, it simply leads us into more sin. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verses nine, nine and 10, the Bible says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There it is again. Don't we want to get to heaven? I know I do. <laughs> and I know you do too. You wouldn't be watching if, it, if that wasn't an issue for you. The Bible says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Again, when you start talking about hatred and wrath, it leads you, it will lead you to other sins. And sins, what's the wage of it? What's the wage of sin? It's death. And it's eternal death. It's eternal death. Now, let's deal with the fact of the matter of God being a unique being. Because God, unlike us, unlike us, God, if God forgives, God forgets. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart and in their minds will I write them. And look, listen to verse 17, listen. And their sins and iniquities, what does God say? Will I. God speaking for himself, will I remember no more? In the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the 25th verse, I even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. <clears throat> That's what God says about himself. In the book of Hebrews, the 8th chapter, the 12th verse, for I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That's what God is saying about himself. In the book of Micah, the seventh chapter, the 19th verse, I love this verse. <clears throat> he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. Listen, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. <laughs> you know, I, I typically use the phrase that God will literally take our sin and throw it into a sea of forgetfulness. And, and that's the scripture that I kind of borrow loosely from. 
and paraphrase. But God says, I'm going to take your sin and I will throw him into the depths of the sea because he's not going to remember our sin. Praise be unto God. But here's the deal. We're made in the image and likeness of God, but we ain't God, <laughs> okay? Let's just be real about that. And humans, humans remember, <clears throat> and if we're not careful in our remembering, we will hold grudges and we will act sinfully on those grudges. I'll give you an example. In the book of Genesis, the 34th chapter, terrible situation. And I'm not suggesting that uh, they, it was something that they should have forgotten. I'm not saying that. Only God, God's unique. God forgets. What I am saying is we cannot allow our remembering to drive us to sin. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. <clears throat> now, we know <clears throat> part of the rest of the story where the father goes to Leah's father and negotiates um, uh, the connection between the families, where Shechem basically marries uh, um, Dinah. But that wasn't good enough for the brothers, specifically two of the brothers. Uh, their thought, their their thought was to tell the men who were Gentiles that they had to be circumcised if they were going to become part of the family. The men, these men, Shechem, Hamor, and and their their group, um, they got circumcised because they assumed that they were dealing with people in good faith. Terrible situation, but they were trying to make it right. And the Bible says in that same chapter, and it came to pass, verse 25, on the third day, when they, those men were sore, because they were circumcised, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. The fact of the matter is, if we're not careful, when someone does something tragic to us, we will have hatred in our heart and that hatred will build into other sin. In this case, murder. In this case, murder. So what's the biblical directive? What is the biblical directive? Ephesians 4 verses 26 and 27 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. It's okay to be angry when someone has hurt you, betrayed you, treated you poorly, but don't allow that anger to lead you to sin. In Proverbs 25, verse 21 and 22, the Bible says, listen, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink, for thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. In other words, kill him with kindness. Hallelujah. Let the love of God melt their hearts like hot coals melting their hearts, that the person that you are ministering to, even though they have hurt you, as you minister to them, they be led to Christ. If it happens, if it so happens that it was someone in the church who hurt you, a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ, 
There's a way to handle it. Matthew 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. We're talking about seasoned saints, not some baby saint as a witness, but some seasoned saint, a deacon. I mean, we're talking about one of the mothers of the church, okay? That it, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church, referring to church government, the pastor in particular. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. In other words, there's a way to deal with people who have hurt you in the context of the church where there is church hurt there is church help. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a way to handle it in a biblical way. In a biblical way. Now, what is the purpose of these thoughts and actions? The answer is for your and my own peace of mind. God wants us to have that forgiving heart not just so we can be forgiven by God, although that's part of it. Because if you don't forgive others, neither will your heavenly father forgive your trespasses. Okay? But the other part of it, the other aspect of forgiving, and, and sometimes a, for, or a forgotten aspect of forgiving, is that you can gain peace of mind and joy. Hebrews 12 uh, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. And watch this, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. You get it? If you allow bitterness to get in your heart because of what someone did to you, it will trouble you. You'll be losing sleep and they'll be at home snoring. <laughs> You'll be tossing and turning and, and they got slob hanging out their mouth. They so deep in sleep. <laughs> Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. In other words, you can get so caught up in the anger and the hatred uh, that you are feeling because of something someone did to you. And I'm not talking about something made up. They actually offended you. They actually hurt you. They betrayed you. But the Bible says for us to try to follow peace with all men, not some men, not just the good folks, not just people who treat us nicely. Because God wants our own mind, our peace of mind protected. Psalm 51 Verse 10, he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. It, it, it almost needs sometimes a cleansing. We need a spiritual cleansing. We need to get in our secret closet, pray unto God, pray in the Holy Ghost until God's spirit ministers to us, removing the poison of hatred and wrath from our heart. And then verse 12, the 51st Psalm, he says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. These things are not easy. I'm not, I'm not telling you this is easy. It, when, when somebody hurts you, it hurts. <laughs> Come on now. When you they put your trust in somebody and they betray you, that is painful. When someone cheats you who was close to you, you're missing whatever they cheated you out of or stole from you. Those things are painful. I didn't say it would be easy. I'm just saying with God, all things are possible. With Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our God, all things, all things are possible. Look, you don't need to forget like God forgets. You just need to release the anger. That's what needs to happen. Release that pain. Lord, God Almighty. The Bible puts it this way in Hebrews 12, 
Verse 1, wherefore saying we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, what should we do? Let us, I'm taking this thing slow now because I don't want you to miss it. Let us, what? Lay aside. Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You're talking about somebody who should have been angry, somebody who could have at any moment cried out and had a legion of angels come and, and wreak havoc on the people who had betrayed him, who had spit on him who had beat him cruelly and unjustifiably. Remember Jesus, despising the shame. And what has happened with Jesus? He is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. To be at the right hand means to be in a place of power. And he is in a place of power. And I love the third verse because <laughs> look, the scripture will remind you will absolutely remind you that there are people who don't, who've endured some stuff you haven't even begun to endure. Come on now. Uh, as bad as you've had it in your life, there's somebody out there who's had it worse. And oh, by the way, one of them is Jesus. <laughs> the man, Jesus Christ. That flesh. Hallelujah. It says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Again, God wants you to have peace of mind. That's what God wants for you. So what do we do when someone hurts us? We need to lay stuff aside. We need to lay it aside. That's what the scripture says. And that phrase lay aside means to put away, to cast off. We need to shake it off. Lord God Almighty. In the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 22 uh, through 24, the scripture says that ye put off. Man, we got to lay some stuff aside. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And listen, what does this say? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye, may, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness and true holiness. Praise be unto God. Pulling off the old, putting on the new. We must be born again. That's part of that process where we Repent, we, we die to sin. We are baptized or buried with him by baptism into death and that we rise to walk in the newness of life. And part of our walk with Christ every day is to pull off the old and to put on the new. Pull off that old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Hallelujah. And you can't be renewed in the spirit of your mind without the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But no man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That's what the scripture says. Now, now, now. Here's the bottom line. It's important for us to forgive, to lay it aside, but we don't have to forget as God does as it pertains to sin and when someone has sinned against us. In fact, I, will, I dare say there are lessons to be learned when you have been betrayed. Mm -hmm, that's right. There are lessons that we can learn when someone has hurt us. I'll give you some scripture and then I'll conclude. I'll give you three portions of scripture, starting with Psalms, the 118th Psalm, verses eight and nine. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. 
it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. So it doesn't matter if uh, it's a man of low estate or, or high esteem. It's better to put our trust in the Lord than in man, whether they got money, whether they're rich, poor, white, black, green, blue, polka dot. It is better for us to trust in the Lord. And so when someone does hurt us, who was close to us, someone does betray us, who should not have betrayed us, it should remember, remind us, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in man. Jeremiah 17 and 5, and I'm not justifying wrong. Hold on, before I get to Jeremiah 17 and 5, I don't want you to think in any way that I'm justifying someone treating us wrong. No, no, absolutely not. Each man will have to, have to deal with the things that are done in this body, in their bodies. Hallelujah. But vengeance is not ours, it's God's. Jeremiah 17 and 5, thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, or his strong place, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Sometimes we set ourselves up to fail. We set ourselves up to fail when we put too much trust in people and not in God. Last scripture, a very, very familiar scripture to many. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Depart, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. So uh, we've been dealing with this subject, the absence of malice. Um, how do you forgive when you can't forget? Well, it's not, a, it's not an issue of forgetting for us, okay? But it is a matter of forgiving where we have the absence of ill will, the absence of hatred in our life. When we can see someone and we're not gritting out to your old kid, just, just a minute with them. <laughs> Give me a bat in a, in a dark alley. <laughs> when we don't have that racing through our heart and in our mind, oh, there's a blessing when someone has treated us bad. And again, it is not to exempt them from seeking forgiveness when they have, when someone else has done wrong to us. But remember, be quick to forgive because that's exactly how we want uh, God to treat us when we trespass his laws and we hurt God's feelings. Amen. I hope this wasn't too somber. I hope this wasn't um, too heavy. And I hope, and I, in fact, no, no, I know it's helping somebody who's listening to me right now. And oh, by the way, if it's, if it's not an issue you're dealing with now, as my, as my daddy would say, just keep on living. <laughs> you will have to deal with this subject matter. But we, we thank God for you. We appreciate your prayers. Appreciate uh, you tuning in. Again, share us, like us, follow us, <clears throat> do all those things. <clears throat> On Facebook, we want to uh, reach out, reach as many people as possible, and you can help us do that. Thank you. I appreciate you. We have some awesome people out there watching us, and we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, those of you who um, who know the words of prayer, pray for us. Hallelujah. Amen. We got some prayer warriors out there, so pray for us. And again, if you want to give, give Lafay PayPal, the Lion's Cross. Amen. The Lion's Cross. And we certainly appreciate your blessing, the kingdom of God. So I leave you with the words I generally leave you with. I love you, but God, but God, he loves you best.